Hello everybody. Today we are discussing about solar collectors, solar thermal flat plate collectors and solar concentrating collectors. Table of contents. Today we are about to discuss these contents. Non-concentrating collectors, flat plate collectors, evacuated tube collectors, concentrating collectors, parabolic trough systems, parabolic dish systems, power train, power tower systems, stationary concentrating solar collectors, and at the last conclusions. Introduction. Solar thermal collectors are special kind of heat exchangers that transform solar radiation energy to internal energy of the transport medium. It is a device designed to absorb incident solar radiation, converts it into heat and to transfer it to a fluid in contact with it. The solar energy thus collected is carried from the circulating fluid either directly to the hot water or space conditioning equipment or to a thermal energy storage tank. Physical Principles of Conversion Fundamental process is general use for heat conversion is the greenhouse effect. Energy of emission increases with increase in temperature following wind flow. There are two general types of solar collectors, non-concentrating collectors and concentrating collectors. Non-concentrating collectors. It is in the non-concentrating type the collector area that is the area that intercepts the solar radiation is the same as the absorber area that is the area absorbing the radiation. In these types the whole solar panel absorbs light. They are mainly classified as flat plate solar collectors and evacuated tube solar collectors. Flat plate collectors. Flat plate collector is basically a flat surface with high absorb absorptivity for solar radiation called as the absorb absorptivity surface. Parts of a flat plate collector. A flat plate collector have five major parts. A transparent cover, tubes, fins and passages, the absorber plate, insulation, the casing or container. They are divided into two main classifications liquid heating collectors and air or gas heating collectors. This is the a schematic diagram of a liquid heating flat plate collectors collector. This is a drawing which is reveals the working of a flat plate collector. In this drawing, we could see that the uh, solar radiation enters the flat plate collector through the glass and the heat is transferred uh, from the solar radiation to the working fluid. Working principle of flat plate collectors. The sunlight passes through the glazing and strikes the absorber plate, which heats up, changing solar energy into heat energy. Thus, the heat is transferred to the fluid passing through pipes attached to the absorber plate by means of convective heat transfer. Absorber plates are commonly painted with selective coatings which absorb and retain heat better than ordinary black paint. Absorber plates are usually made of metal, typically copper or aluminium because the metal is a good conductor of heat. This is a diagram which explains us about the working of a flat plate air heater solar collector. The air enters through that perforated absorber and the 
from that absorber when the absorber collects heat from the sun and that absorber transfers that collected heat to the ambient air that enters through that perforated absorber thus the air becomes heated and that heat is used for air conditioning so some other purpose glazing material to admit maximum possible radiation and minimize the upward loss glass is the commonly used material plastic films and sheets can also be used glass transmit 90% of incident radiation the the main property of the that glazing material should be that that glazing material should transmit maximum amount of light it it should only reflect the a minimum amount of light that's the main property of the material we are looking here in order to qualify for a glazing material absorber plate absorber plate is the main part of the collector it absorbs maximum amount of solar radiation and emit less amount of heat to atmosphere it trans it transfers retained heat to fluid copper aluminum and steel are generally used the back portion of the absorber plate is covered with insulation we put that insulation in the absorber plate in order to reduce the heat loss evacuated tube solar collector the evacuated tube solar collectors are built to reduce convective and heat conduction loss because uh, heat cannot transfer through conduction or convection through vacuum as conduction and convection need a medium for trans for to, to uh, transfer so vacuum can be used as a good heat insulator this is the main principle <laughs> which becomes advantages to the evacuated tube solar collector each evacuated tube solar collector consists of two glass tubes the outer tube is made of extremely strong transparent glass that is able to withstand changing climatic conditions the inner tube is also made of glass but coated with a special selective coating which features excellent solar heat absorption and minimal heat reflection properties the air is evacuated from the space between the two glass tube to form a vacuum due to this vacuum the heat which is collected at the inner glass cannot escape to the environment this is a schematic diagram which explains us about the working principle of the evacuated tube solar collector here the outer tube transmits the light and the working fluid that passes through the inner tube absorbs the light and it becomes hot but that whole that hot fluid that uh, heat energy from the hot fluid cannot escape to the surrounding because the space in between the two glass tubes is vacuum as the vacuum is a poor conductor of heat the inner glass tube the heat inside the inner glass tube stays there and it eventually goes out and it is used this diagram shows the evacuated tube solar collectors how this evacuated tube solar collectors as is arranged in an array to form a big system here we can see solar 
flat plate collectors used for heating buildings. I am, I am showing you this picture in order to ima help you imagine how sun is used for our day-to-day -day applications in some advanced technologies. In this picture, I am showing you how a solar flat plate collector is used for heating the swimming pools. Concentrating collectors. Concentrating collectors induce a direct radiation over a large area and focus it into a small absorber area. They can provide high temperatures more efficiently since the absorption surface area is much smaller. They require mechanical equipment that constantly orients the collectors towards the sun and keeps the absorber at the point of focus. Working principles of concentrating collectors. Concentrating solar collectors use mirrors and lenses to concentrate and focus sunlight into a thermal receiver. The receiver absorbs and converts sunlight into heat. The heat is then transported to a steam generator or engine where it is converted into electricity. As per the working principles, there are three main types of concentrating solar power systems that is truss systems, dish engine systems and central receiver systems. Truss systems. These solar collectors use mirrored parabolic truss to focus the sun's energy to a fluid carrying receiver tube located at the focal point of a parabolically curved trough reflector. The energy from the sun sent to the tube heats oil flowing through the tube and the heat energy is then used to generate electricity in a conventional steam generator. Individual trust systems currently can generate about 80 megawatts of electricity. Trough designs can incorporate thermal storage Setting aside the heat transfer fluid in its hot phase, allowing for electricity generation several hours into the evening. Due to this advantage, this can be used for electricity generations even when the sun is not out. I mean the night time when the sun is not out. Currently, our parabolic trust plants are hybrid. This is the figure that you see on the left is the cross section of a parabolic trough, and the figure you see on the right <coughs> is a picture taken from a solar power plant that uses a parabolic trough system. The the figure that you are now seeing <coughs> is a schematic diagram which explains us about the working principle of a parabolic trough collector. Here the parabolic shaped reflective trough will reflect the sunlight and it focuses all the sunlight to the central heat pipe. The fluid that runs through the central heat pipe captures all the heat and carries away. This is the method how the parabolic trough collector works. Parabolic troughs often use single axis or dual axis tracking. This tracking is necessary as the sun <coughs> changes its position throughout the day. Without these types of tracking, this parabolic truss cannot be pointed towards the sun all day and it will reduce the efficiency of the parabolic truss system.
stationary concentrating solar collectors. Stationary concentrating collectors use compound parabolic reflectors and flat reflectors for directing solar energy to an accompanying absorber through wide acceptance angle. The wide acceptance angle for these reflectors eliminate the need for a sun tracker. This class of collector includes parabolic rough flat plate collectors, flat plate collectors with parabolic boosting reflectors and a solar cooker. Parabolic disc systems. A parabolic disc collector is similar in appearance to a large satellite dish but has mirror-like reflectors and an absorber at the focal point. It uses a dual axis sun tracker. The figure that you see on the left is a cross section of a parabolic dish. And the figure you see on the right is a picture taken of a modern day parabolic dish collector. It uses a dish shaped parabolic mirrors as reflectors to concentrate and focus the sun's rays into a receiver, which is mounted above the dish at the dish center. A dish system is a standalone unit composed primarily of a collector, a receiver and an engine. It works by collecting and concentrating the sun's energy with a dish shaped surface into a receiver that absorbs the energy and transfers it to the engine. Each dish produces 5 to 50 kilowatts of electricity and can be used independently or linked together to increase generating capacity. More capacity is possible by connecting dishes together. Central Receiver Systems Central receivers use thousands of individual sun tracking mirrors called the heliostats to reflect solar energy into a receiver located on top of a tall tower. The receiver collects the sun's heat into a heat transfer fluid that mainly is a molten salt because the, a molten salt has high boiling point than water. So molten salt is used for this purpose other than abundantly available water. That molten salt fold flows through the receiver and collects the sun's heat and transfers it away. The salt's heat energy is then used to make steam to generate electricity in a conventional steam generator located at the foot of the tower. The molten salt storage system retains heat efficiently so it can be stored for hours or even days before being used to generate electricity. Power Tower System A heliostat uses a field of dual axis sun trackers that direct solar energy into a large absorber located on a tower. To date, the only application for the heliostat collector is power generation in a system called the Power Tower. A power tower has a field of large mirrors that follow the sun's path across the sky. The mirrors concentrate sunlight into a receiver on top of a high tower. A computer keeps the mirrors aligned so that the reflected rays of the sun is always aimed at the receiver. High pressure steam is generated to produce electricity. The figure you see here is a picture taken 
from a some such type of a power tower system facility the picture you see here is a schematic diagram which explains us the working of a power tower system here you can see that the sun's heat is reflected by the heliostat into the power tower actually into the receiver that sits at the top of the power tower hot uh, molten salts run through the receiver and and transmits those energy those sun's energy that received by the receiver to a storage tank to a hot storage tank that hot storage tank is covered with insulators and can retain heat for even days when the electricity is necessary that hot molten starch stored in the hot storage tank is transferred to a steam to a uh, steam generator where the heat is transferred to a uh, heat exchanger to uh, to the water through a heat exchanger and steam is generated and that steam is used to run a turbine and this produce heat uh, produce electricity through a generator after that that molten salt is run through a cooling tower and heat is low uh, heat is uh, reduced and then stored in a storage tank and then dal this process is again repeated these are the key features of three solar collectors you can read it and can understand about the different aspects of these three collectors these three types of collectors technology comparison towers and troughs are best suited for large grid connected power projects in the 30 to 200 megawatt size grid systems are modular and can be used in a single dish applications or grouped in dish farms to create larger multi megawatt projects parabolic trough plants are the most mature solar power technology available today power towers with low cost and efficient thermal storage promise to offer dispatchable high capacity factor solar solar only power plants in the near future economic and environmental considerations the most important factor driving the solar energy system design process is whether the energy it produces is economical although there are factors other than economics that enter into a decision of when to use solar energy that is no pollution no greenhouse gas generation security of the energy resource etc design decisions are almost exclusively dominated by the levelized energy cost this or some similar economic parameter gives the expected cost of the energy produced by the solar energy system conclusions solar power technology for electricity generation is ready for the market various types of single and dual purpose plants have been analyzed and tested in the field solar thermal power plants will within the next decade provide a significant contribution to an efficient economical and environmental friendly power supply they will be available as large scale grid connected dispatchable markets and remote or modular distributed markets thank you